Okay, so this is 5.1, logarithmic functions and their graphs. And um, you may have seen a lot of this stuff in the news lately talking about exponential functions. And then there's thing called um, logistic graphs, which actually are based off of logarithms. So with everything going on with the virus, this is actually very pertinent. There's actually even a different type of graph that you can do with it called a log graph which makes the exponential growth turns it into a line. So you actually can look to see whether it's linear or not. So um, this is actually very relevant <laughs> to today. So 5.2 covers recognizing and evaluating logarithmic functions with base A, graphing logarithmic functions, and that is going to be based off of Desmos. And then we'll talk about transformations and how they work with a logarithmic function, but you can use Desmos to graph. Recognizing, evaluating, and graphing natural logarithmic functions, and using logarithmic functions to model and solve real-life problems. I'm going to be focusing on the recognizing, evaluating, and transformation kind of things. I'm not going to talk about the real-life problems. Um, that is covered in some of my later sections uh, videos. I have a video on modeling with exponential and logarithmic functions, so that one does a much better job of talking about um, using them in real life than um, what we see here. So I'm going to start with the definition of a logarithm. So the logarithm is the inverse of an exponential function. So if we go back to where we're talking about inverses of functions, they basically undo each other. So an exponential function is where your variable is in the exponent. And so the logarithm undoes or undoes, I don't know what the proper grammar of that is, but it basically reverses the exponential and it takes the exponent of the variable and it removes it from the exponent so that we can actually work with it. Because what we've seen before this week is any exponent we have always has a number. Now we're looking at exponents with letters and we can't work with them until we remove the letter from the exponent. And so the logarithm allows us to do that. So what's really important to know is how to convert between the two. And that's this basically this relationship right here. So you can go from one end to the other and you can convert from one to the other. So if we look at the right side, we have X equals A to the Y, or if you want, you can write it as Y equals A to the X, whichever is, you know, the variables don't really matter. A is the base and that's always a number. So you can have an equation like two, to the y power. We can convert that to a logarithm by having y equals log base 2, which is how we say that out loud, equals x. So what was in the exponent y is now out of the exponent, and now we have a way to calculate that essentially. So if you just think of logarithms as giving you the exponent, um, it's a good way to kind of think about the size of things. You can take the log of really big numbers, and it will basically give you a general idea of the size. Like if I have a really large number and I take the log and get like 9 or 9.5, that tells you that number is in the trillions. So it just gives you an idea of how big the number is when you take the log. So it's all about getting that exponent. Now when we have a function that's a logarithm, we abbreviate that with log, log base A of X. So x is your input, and then a is a number, um, and usually we work with log base 10, where a is going to be 10. And so that's one of the most common logs we use, base 10, because we have a base 10 number system, and powers of 10 are really easy to work with. So calculators actually have a log button, and whenever you see log on a calculator, it's essentially assumed to be base 10, with the exception of um, programming kind of type of calculators. If you go into computer programming, if there's functions that are built in that are log, those actually default to a natural log, which I will talk about next, not necessarily a log base 10. But on calculators themselves, the scientific calculator you have, the type of calculator you might see on Windows, if it says log, that is assumed to be base 10. And so it's basically giving you the exponent. If you had 10 to some power, what would that exponent be? So that is, that's what that is telling you. 
I mentioned the natural logarithm. So we have this constant called Euler's number, which we see in exponential functions, and sometimes it's called a natural, um, a natural constant. It has this word natural. And so its inverse is then the natural logarithm. And so Euler's number is a special number that you have on your calculator. Um, mine is actually not, I, I have to hit second to get that, to that number. It's actually above my natural log button. So the natural log has a special base of E, and we abbreviate that with LN. So it's not 1N, it's lowercase l and then lowercase n. Um, I did some research actually to figure out where this came from, and I had always thought it came from logarithm natural, but actually that is one theory, but there's actually multiple theories where the LN symbol came from. It could have come from multiple different places, um, so we don't really know the real origin of it, but we use natural log and we use LN. So my calculator has an LN button, and right above my LN button is the e to the x button to get Euler's number. So my calculator has both of these buttons, so I can switch easily between one and the other. I have a graphing calculator, and that button, that graphing calculator has only the natural log button, and it doesn't have a log button. You have to go deep into the, the settings or whatever to find the log button. So depending on your calculator, you may have one or the other, you may have both. It kind of did... The more expensive the calculator is, the less likely you are to have a log button. And that's just because those more expensive calculators are used in higher level math, where you're much more likely to encounter a natural log versus a regular log. So those are just, you know, based for certain situations or, you know, what, what the uses are for it. Um, but my $10 TI calculator that I have has both buttons. So the natural log is... Basically, you can convert from y equals the natural log of x, or ln x, and you could rewrite that as x equals e to the y. So we're going to just start by practicing how to convert from a log to an exponential, and then from exponential to a log. So you can see how this works. So if it's in log or natural log form, we're going to make it exponential. If it's exponential, we're going to take a log or a natural log. So this first one, we have log base 9 of 1 over 81 equals negative 2. So when we convert this with an exponential, you start, I, I always start with what the base is. So the base is the underscore for the log, that's 9. So this is going to be base 9, so 9 is going to be under the exponent. And then whatever the log is equal to is always the exponent. So since this is equal to negative 2, that is going to be my exponent. Then I set it equal to whatever I'm taking the log of. So what's remaining is the 1 over 81. And so that's how you can convert from something in log form to an exponential form. And you can do 9 to the negative 2 on your calculator. You can do 1 divided by 81, and you can verify that those are equal to the same thing. Not a problem, Tanisha. <laughs> Glad you're here. <laughs> you can always see what you missed um, when I share out the recording, and you can watch the beginning. But you're, you came in right at the first example, so that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to just hide the base here, and then it equals to that exponent. So those go together. Um, so that's the 9, and then that exponent. So that's sort of how I think about it, and then I always make it equal to whatever's left over. I'm actually going to skip down to the natural log one so that you can see how that works. So ln... 7, that's natural log, so that would be the same thing if I had log base e of 7 equals that value. And the reason why they have 1.945 with dots is because natural logs generally don't come out to whole numbers or they don't come out to even decimals. They go on forever. So we either have to round 
and we usually round to three or four decimal places, or you're going to use a dot just to show that it goes on forever. So for the natural log, my base is e. So it's going to be to e to some power, so e, and then it's the exponent is always going to be what that log or natural log is equal to. So 1.945. And then the only number I haven't used yet is the 7. So that's what that is equal to. Now let's go the other way. So let's look at my second bullet point. I have 9 to the 3 halves equals 27. And I have, could you, could, okay. Which part, <laughs> Tanisha, which part do you want me to repeat? The part um, just I, where it, I think it might work. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. Okay. I was like, man, typing all that might not work. <laughs> so let me. Um, so I, <laughs> I came in a bit at the end of the first equation. I was still kind of setting up, um, and I or a first example. I do understand that E would be the 1.945, and then the 7 would come after. I see the set the setup there, but I just don't understand why. Okay. okay. So um, the logarithm is undoing an exponent. And so the base of a logarithm is the base of an exponent, and the logarithm gives you the exponent. So that's why whatever our log or our natural log are equal to, that gives you your exponent when you're converting. And the LN symbol always stands for a base of E, which is Euler's number, this special constant. Um, so we have a special symbol for it, and so we use E. It's sort of like pi. It's a number that kind of goes on forever and shows up a lot. Okay, okay. Um, so for the pretty much the first one is like the second one, but the 9 would have the exponent of 2 since that is where it's on the other side of the equation. Is that right? Yep. yep. Oh. oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> once you once you do several of them, you'll see that okay, there's like a pattern to how it gets written. You can kind of kind of see how that works. Yeah, I think that's my problem. I need to go back for the other weeks and do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's okay. all about yeah doing enough problems that you see a pattern. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. So um, moving to the second bullet point, we have something with an exponent, so we want to put it in log form. And so I'm going to start with log, and then the base, what's under the exponent, is 9. So that's going to be what is the base on my log. So that's going to be a subscript of 9 there. And then I'm going to leave a blank. The log, it always gives you the exponent, so that equals the exponent. And then I just fill in my blank spot with the last number. So the way that I always do these, I identify my base, identify my exponent, look to see where they need to go, and then plug in my missing number. So if you want to think about it, our log, a base, we have some number equals the exponent. So that way, if you need to convert from one to the other, you can see how that works. So you can th think of it always equals the exponent if you have something in log form. So if you're trying to have a log to convert it outside of log form, you can identify what the exponent is and what the base is. Now, for the last one here, whenever you see E, that tells you you're going to use the natural log. So I, when I write my natural log, I always put them in cursive only so that the L doesn't look like the number 1 because I don't want it to look confusing. With log, I can tell it says log, but if I used LN, it kind of gets confusing. So I just make them cursive so that you can see that it's not a number. Um, some people use a capital L, whatever you need to do so that you don't get confused. So the LN already takes care of the base, so I don't have to write that. And then it's always equal to your exponent. Our exponent is negative 3 fourths. So that means I have to fill in 0. 0.4723. I should have left myself more room there. Um, in my missing spot there, in the number spot. And so that's how you can rewrite that. 
or if you wanted to, you could use a log form and use E instead of the natural log symbol. That is the same thing. So those are equivalent. You can use log base E or you can use LN. Does that make sense? You guys kind of seeing the pattern there? Do you have any questions? No, it seems like it, it makes sense to me anyway. How about you, Tanisha? Um, I think I get it for the most part. I'm still writing down um, the last equation here, but it looks like when it's an exponent with the E or the log in front of it, um, it's just converting into a decimal. Um, yeah, essentially, when we, whenever we work with logs and um, natural logs, we're going to end up with a lot of decimals. These things rarely come out to nice numbers, very, very rarely. So we're going to be dealing with a lot of decimals, especially when you put them in your calculator. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it, I definitely have to study it, but um, I think I get <laughs> the base of it, yeah. Yeah, if you go to the, um, at the end of 5.2 where they have, like, review problems. There's a whole bunch of more converting problems and you can look at the even so you can check to see how those are converted so you can get an idea. Okay, 5.2. Yes. Okay, definitely go back to that. Whoops. Okay, so the next thing is to teach you guys how you do this on your calculator <laughs> because a lot of these, as I said, they don't come out to whole numbers and then you kind of have to do them on your calculator. So we've got log of 1 over 500 and then natural log 1 over e squared. So I'm going to briefly stop sharing my screen so that I can get my calculator up here. And hopefully my calculator shows up nicely. Um, looks like we can see it. Okay. I wish I could. All I see is a little square. You know, I can't really see how big you guys are seeing this. Okay, so my calculator here, I have right underneath my second, I have a log button and a natural log button. So for me, on this calculator, it's going to be real easy for me to determine these. So the way my calculator works is that I have to hit log first. And then it, oh, I have to turn it on first. That would help. <laughs> I hit log. And then it gives me log, and then it has parentheses. And so then I just type in 1 divided by 500. And then I can close my parentheses. And then when I hit Enter, I'm going to get a really uh, long decimal. And so we generally will want to round these to three or four decimal places. And you know that you've done it right depending on your sign. So if you're taking the log of something that is between 0 and 1, you're going to get a negative number. If you're taking the log of something that's essentially greater than one, you're going to get a positive. And you can't take a logs of negatives. So if I try to take like a log of negative five and I hit enter, I'm going to get domain error. So anything you take a log of, it has to be positive. So that, some things to think about when you're entering these if you want to, you know, if you want to make sure you're doing these correctly. And then um, the next example I have is natural log of 1 over e squared. So this one's a little trickier to do on the calculator. And so I do have a natural log button. So, oh, let me clear everything. Okay, so I've got my natural log. And then the 1 over I can do is 1 divided by. And then the e squared... So that is actually in yellow above my natural log button. So I have to hit second first. And then I hit the natural log to get the E. And then I can put in my exponent. And so then I can do that and make sure I close all my parentheses. And I hit enter. And gives me that one comes out as negative 2. And that should come out as negative 2. And I'll show you why. So that one does come out as a whole number. But that's how you do that on a calculator. So you're going to want to make sure you know how to use your calculator. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen again. And actually, I'm going to bring up Desmos to show you guys. Desmos is really nice for doing more than just graphing. So 
So you can graph, but it also has a scientific calculator here. And it actually has, so you don't see it here, but if you click on uh, function here, you have the natural log and the log button, and you have a button for E. So if you don't have, and you even just has regular E here. So if you don't have a like physical calculator that has these buttons, Desmos actually has a calculator. You just have to hit function. So like for that log of one over 500, I would type in log, and then I could even use my cap, my keyboard to do one. I hit my forward slash, which gives me a division over 500, and then it gives me my number right there. So Desmos is really nice to be able to do this as well for you guys um, if you don't have a regular calculator. So I'm going to now show the work here because I showed you guys how to do it on the calculator. So I'm going to law. Oops, I thought I was on my pen. Apparently I was not. OK. So if you take the log of 1 over 500, I'm going to just write down all the decimals I see. So that's everything that my calculator gave me. When we round, and I want to make sure we talk about rounding, because this is like we don't normally have to worry about it. Um, but because we're going to be working with a lot of decimals, we do have to worry about it. So let's say we're rounding to four decimal places. So that's spot, four spots after the decimal. So I'm going to just draw a line so that you know where you're doing the cutoff. Then you have to look at that number after that line. If that is five or bigger, you round up. So that means that 9 would be rounded up to a 10. But because that becomes a 10, I have to carry the 1. So that 8 is going to become a 9. So your 89 then basically becomes a 90, if you think about it that way. So when we round this, it's going to be negative 2.6990. Because I'm rounding that 89 up to a 90. Being able to round is really important because um, if you're off on your rounding, you can be off on your final answer, which then could be problematic when you, you know, take the final exam and you have these things on the final exams because then your answer might not show up. So that's why I want to make sure that we're all rounding the same so that way your answer does show up and you can see that it's there and you don't freak out. Now this natural log of 1 over e squared. Oh, let me check the chat. Got it. OK, perfect. Now the 1 over uh, natural log of 1 over e squared came out to negative 2. And let me show you why. So we have the natural log and e, 1 over e squared. We can use our properties of exponents. This goes all the way back to week one, where if you have a fraction, that's the same as having a negative x. So that is really the same as e to the negative 2. Now, the natural log is base e. And remember, the natural log gives you the exponent. So it's going to give you the exponent here on e. So the exponent on e is negative 2. So that's why when you take the natural log of 1 over e squared in your calculator, you get negative 2. Because it's telling you that your exponent on e is negative 2. That's from the natural log. If it was the log of 1 over e squared, that would be different because it's saying what exponent would be on 10 to what power. But here, natural log, we're looking at e. What is the exponent on e? That is negative 2. But as long as you have your calculator, that part is more important than, you know, it's good to understand why it comes out to negative 2. But I am completely happy with you guys relying on your calculator to figure that out.
It is. It is. Yeah. It's it's pretty easy. They're not actually a lot of people end up really liking this week, because um, it is it's not as bad as it it sounds scary, but it's really not so bad. I just want to make sure because uh, that one was really easy, and I just want to make sure I'm not overcomplicating it because it's too easy. Um, when you have the natural log and you have the e as an exponent at the bottom, we mm -hmm. naturally know that we're just going to look for the number, let it be a negative or positive outside or the next number close to the exponent, and that's what it'll be. Um, if I think you're, if I'm understanding what you're asking, so let me give an example of, let's have it e to the 4, so it's not a 1 over. Because a natural log has a base of e, the natural log is telling you what is the exponent on e, so this is going to be 4. Right, so okay. That, so that's some, something special for natural log if your base is e. If you have the natural log and it's not e, say it's to the 4, because it's not e, that's when you're going to get a decimal. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So actually, if I do this one on my calculator, I get 2.77258722. So it only comes out if your base and what you're taking, what your exponent is on is the same as what you are taking, the, you know, your natural log is base E. Okay, I, I'm working on my my cell phone, and I do have the E button. I have the natural oh. log the E, um, and then put two, but I guess I don't know how to put it to the decimal. So I would have to kind of work that out with another calculator. So on your calculator, what you would want to enter in to figure it out would be this part. So you wouldn't worry about the decimal part. You would just be putting the part on the left, and then you should, when you hit enter, get what's on the right. For natural log via the phone, it's going to give a parenthesis. Would I take that little parenthesis? Oh, it's going to take the whole thing out. So you'd want your parentheses would be like there if you were okay. with the parentheses. I got something different there. I don't mean to make it complicated. I do apologize. No, I want to make sure that we can get your, your phone working. So um, let me get my calculator out of my phone <laughs> so okay. I can, because they're probably working the same way. Okay. So, so I, when I hit my, my natural log button and then I, I see a parenthesis and then I see two, is that what you're seeing? Uh, yeah, it's L N and then the parentheses. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then like, let's say you want to do two to four, two to the four, you'd have to hit your two. Mm -hmm. And then you need to hit your exponent button, which for me on my calculator says x to the y. Okay, let me see if I have other options. I have buttons like a I N V rad or per, um, percentage symbol sin C O S tan. Okay. Yeah, those types. And then so. I. I do have a little arrow that goes up that's supposed to, like, on the keyboard, it would indicate that it would allow you to do the exponent. But oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That button might be the one that you want. Yeah, okay. so your calculator is definitely looking different than my phone calculator. <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem with having lots of different calculators. Yeah, different brands. But when I do it yep. like that, actually, I do get 2.7725. Okay. I get the same answer. Okay, great. So that, there you go. So now we figured out your calculator. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, it's an important part. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or issues? That seems to be working fine for me. Okay, good. Okay, so now we have some properties of logs. And... Um, Basically, when does it equal zero? When are you going to get one? When are you going to get the same thing out? And then there's these things called the inverse and one-to-one -one properties. So I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit here. They're basically the same properties, whether it's a log or a natural log. So if you're taking a log of one, you're always going to get zero every time. Because the only way to, because it gives you the exponent, in order to get one, you have to have an exponent of zero. And if you're taking the log 
and this has the same base as what you're taking the log of, those essentially cancel out and you're left with one. Then we have this, these inverse properties. And if you have the same base as, as A, and then you have that with some exponent, it gives you the exponent. And actually that is what we saw with my example with the E. If I scroll down, property three here, we had the natural log of e to some exponent. And so that just cancels out and gives you the exponent. So that's why when I converted the one over e squared to e to the negative two, we got negative two out. They're inverses, so they cancel and you're left with whatever the exponent is. And it's the same thing if it's in the other order, you have e to a natural log or a to any log. Basically they cancel out and then you're left with your, your variable or whatever you're trying to take the log of. Then we have the one-to-one -one property, which basically says if you have the log on, same, on both sides and it's the same base, then what's inside those logs or where you're taking the log of must also be equal. And that's the same thing we see here with the one-to-one -one property with the natural log. If the natural log of something equals the natural log of something else, then those inside portions need to also be equal. These are properties that we use when we're solving equations that have logs or natural logs in them. We use these properties. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. We've got two demonstrations here, one with the log and one with the natural log. And we're gonna use the one-to-one -one property to solve these. So with the log, we have log base two on both sides. So that means what's, what we're taking the log of, the x minus three and the nine, those must be equal. So you can basically just ignore them and write that those things are equal, x minus three equals nine. And then you solve for x. So I'm gonna add three to both sides and then that gives me 12. So if you have things, and you can use the one and one property where these are equal like that, it's really easy to solve. Because you just set those inside portions equal, then you solve for x. And it's the same thing with the natural log. As long as you have this, the log part of the natural log are the same on both sides, then those insides are equal. So x minus seven is equal to seven. So then you can add seven to both sides and you get x is equal to 14. So using the one-to-one -one property with logarithms is actually very simple as long as the bases are the same. Do you guys have questions? Uh, it seemed like that was very easy as well. Mm-hmm. And on the assignment, there are some, I think there's two problems where you can use the one-to-one -one property, one with a logarithm and then one with an exponent. And I think that they come out with quadratics that you have to solve, but the setup is actually pretty simple. Okay. I don't know why when I'm I am looking at the the schoolwork myself and when you explain it I catch it so much better when you explain it. I don't I don't know why. When you're looking at like are you trying to read the book? Yeah, or when I watch the videos like um mm -hmm. the the video he does really good at explaining it, but I don't know why it's like I've only come to the chats maybe twice like the live sessions, mm -hmm. but both times I feel like I really understood it better than me trying to like read the or watch the videos and stuff. It might be, um, I try to use plain language, <laughs> try not to get too complicated with my wording, that might be why. Yeah. It might be because you have the opportunity to ask questions and clarify and you can't do that on a video. So, I don't mm -hmm. know. But thank you for your help and I'm sorry, I'm, you know, thank you for your help. Oh, not a problem, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> and if you're working on your assignment later and you're getting confused on these, let me know and I'm happy to help. Okay, we'll do. I have to homeschool my children as well, so um, and now I have time, so I will do. <laughs> if they're in um, 
if they're learning algebra, you could probably even give them some of the videos that I made and say, here's your lesson. <laughs> you know, my sixth, my sixth grader, that might actually come in handy because I think he's getting close to yeah. it. Or next, so thank you. Yeah, I, that's what I've been telling people that are telling me. They're like, oh, my goodness, I have to homeschool my kids. And I, I'm like, just use my lessons if it, they're covering that. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the graphing part. So like I said, well, um, at the very beginning, use Desmos to graph. So you can type these into Desmos. And actually, let me bring up. So I'm going to just go back to Desmos so you can figure out how to put these on the calculator. So we're going to do graphing. Oops. I was trying to minimize so I can actually. There we go. OK. So if you want to graph these, um, you have to use this keypad. Well, you don't have to. You could type it in by hand. But the keypad is going to be the easiest way here at the bottom. And then you go to the right, and there's this functions. And um, it looks like it's probably going to be under MISC. Yes. So you hit MISC, and then that's where you get log and natural log. So if you want to graph something with a log or a natural log, you're going to use these buttons. So type like y equals. And then if I want to graph the log of x, then I can type it in like any other function, and then it will graph that for you. And if it's something like a log base 2, I'm going to hit that function, and then I'm going to hit the log base A button. And then it automatically is putting me in the lower part where I can put that number. And then I can put that 2. So you can see how log base 2 looks slightly different than a log base 10. And then a natural log, if I want to graph a natural log, again, I can go to functions. And then I just hit the LN button, and then I can type in. So even if I had like x minus 3, you can see how um, it graphs that. So Desmos can graph these. You just have to know where to find the buttons. And that's under that keyboard and then functions. Otherwise, if you start typing, and I just start typing in log, it will automatically convert it for me. And it, so just clean these out for now. I'm, I am going to get back to that, but I'll go back to my, um, there we go. So you can graph these on Desmos. And what's important to know is I said that you have, you can only take logs of positive values. So the domain is your input. So your domain goes from zero to infinity because you can only put positive numbers in there. Um, it doesn't include zero because that is actually a vertical asymptote. So it can get close to zero for x, but it actually will never have an x value of zero. If you try, you're going to um, get an error. The range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that just tells us our output of a log can have negatives and positive values. It's gonna, we don't have any restrictions there. Logarithmic graphs generally always have an x-intercept of 1, 0. Um, and then it's always considering that it's increasing everywhere. So if you're trying to graph these by hand or if you're trying to determine what the base is of a log, um, there's three key ordered pairs that I use to determine these. So if you want to know what your base is and you have this graph, where is your y negative 1? Or where is your y equal to 1? That's actually the easiest one. You can see where is my y equal to 1, and then that x value tells you your base, whether it's a log base 2 or a log base 5. It will tell you um, where that is. So that's just a little trick, especially if you're when you're taking the final exam, which these questions are going to be on, and you have to do graphing with one of these. Um, and you have to identify which graph does this match look for that ordered pair to help you decide is it you know what base is it so transformations and there is a question on the assignment about this about transformations um i think the question yeah i think there's there might is it might be about e it might not be about log i know there's for sure a transformation question but it's very similar so transformations of the log function they work just like regular transformations. 
So the number in front always does that vertical stretch or the vertical shrink. It's the same thing as if you had a number in front of the x squared or a number in front of the absolute value. They always stretch or shrink. So that is a vertical stretch and sh or shrink, depending on what the number is. And if it's negative, then it's going to be a reflection. Negative is a reflection. Now, when you have something happening to x and it's in those parentheses, that's always our shift left or right, and it's always doing the opposite. So if it's minus, then it's shifting it to the right. If it's plus, it's going to shift it to the left. So that shifts left or right. And then when you have a number added on afterwards, that is your vertical, your up and down shift. And that one you don't have to switch the sign. If it says plus, it's adding, it's going up. If it's a minus, it's going down. So these are the same exact transformations, same exact rules that we've been looking at for any kind of function. They're just... The function looks different, but what these numbers do to it is the same thing over and over again. So I'm going to bring up Desmo so I can just demonstrate these for you. Bring that up again. So let's just use a regular log graph of x. I said it always goes through 1, 0, so you can see that right here. I'm going to zoom in. And then you can see that there is a vertical asymptote at zero here, but it's not actually touching it. And then I said, based off of what your base is, that's where your y value is one. So log without anything is base 10. So we should have 10 comma one. And there we go, 10 comma one. So that's a way to verify that this is base 10. If I write minus two, if there's no parentheses, that's a vertical shift. So you can see that moved it down. That moved our graph down. So I had up here, and then I moved it down two. If that's in the parentheses, that means it's happening to the x, and so that moves it left or right. So without that, we were here. If I'm subtracting, I move it to the right. So you can see it moved everything over to the right. And you can see your vertical asymptote also moved to the right. So now our vertical asymptote is at 2 instead of 0. And if I made it a plus, then it moves to the left instead. And now we do have negative numbers that we can put in here. And then the last transformation is if there's a number outside here. So if I multiply it by 2, you can see that stretched it up. And see that it was kind of flat and then it made it go higher so that's a stretch if it's a bigger number you can see that it made it go higher more and if it's a number between 0 and 1 like 0 0.5 it gets smaller it's kind of smushed it's more compressed so that's what we call a shrink it shrinked it down so that's how the transformations work there do you guys have any questions on that No, I think I'm good on that. Perfect. So going back, and this is actually my final example because um, this is basically the last thing that you see in the section. Um, we're going to just identify these transformations, and we're going to do it without graphing, just by knowing those rules. So the first one, we have y equals log base 5 of x minus 1 plus 4. So the minus 1, that's in parentheses, so that means it's happening to the x, and it's the opposite of the sign. So since it says minus 1, that means we're moving to the right. We're actually adding 1. So we're going to say that it goes right 1 unit. 
I don't have a number in front of the log, so there's no stretching or shrinking. And then I have this plus four, so that's outside of the parentheses, so that's vertical, and that's going to be the same direction. So if it's plus four, that means we're going to be up four units. So those are the transformations. We go right one unit and up four units. And then the shape of the graph is going to be the same. It's just moving around. Second example here, we have f of x equals 3 times the natural log of x minus 1. So because in this case the minus 1 is not in parentheses, we're going to read this as if it's natural log of x with parentheses there and then the minus 1. So that's really important. If you want it to happen to the x, it would be in parentheses. If it's not, we're assuming it's not part of that natural log part. So that's outside of the natural log. So we don't have a shift left or right. We're not moving left or right at all. This minus 1 is actually going to be moving down. So we're going to go down one unit. Then we have this 3 in front. So the 3, because it's larger than, than 1, it's going to be a stretch. So we are going to be stretching. by 3. And we're not going to say 3 units because we're basically multiplying by 3. So it's not like we're adding 3. Um, we're multiplying by 3 here. So we're just going to say it's stretching by 3. And then not kind of put units or anything like that. Does that make sense? Do you guys have questions on that? Now that seemed easy as well. Good. Yeah, it <laughs> <That's, does. laughs> that is the point. <laughs> that, is, that is exactly what I want to hear. Right. So. I guess when I, I'm looking at stretching, because I, I can picture this now, the equations as we do it, as I'm seeing the graph. Um, mm -hmm. but it, it, so stretching would pretty much go up, and by three, it would just depend. Because if it was stretching by six, it would pretty much rise six or three or that number there, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's. So here's our basic log and actually in that equation we had a natural log so here's our natural log what it looks like we have that minus one so it's moving down which kind of hard, is hard to see so actually let me make a, a slider here so when you don't have any movement here and then when you're subtracting you can see how it's kind of moving down it looks like it's moving at an angle but that's only because of the shape of the graph it's not actually moving at an angle it just looks like it is Okay, because that's why I was trying to picture, like, I'm like, I don't see how it could stretch, but now I see. Yeah, and then that stretch, so um, I'll make another slider here. So that so if we have no stretch, this is what it looks like. And then as I make the number bigger, you can see how it looks like it's moving up. Mm -hmm. It's not actually moving up. It's just looking like it because it's at an angle. But you can see that at least the values are kind of getting bigger. Okay, and the value would still be based off of what the number stretches by. Yes. So like I, I said, we always have, let me put these back at, um, and then this one should be at, at zero. Okay. So I said we always have one comma zero on the graph. Okay. So I'm going to just, I'm just label this as key point. So when we're moving things up or down, let me make that a plus that happens to y. So I'm going to just put plus a there. And then what happens is that stretch is a multiplication to the y value. So I'm going to just type in a multiplication there just so you can see what's happening and you can see a, a point move. So if I'm moving this up or down, see how that point itself is, is moving up or down. Right. So it helps when you have one point that you can actually see. And then when we're stretching, we're multiplying, so it's actually kind of getting bigger. Now it's also going to mess with the the x value, but you can see it's it's like you're it's pulling that up higher. Okay. If that makes sense. It does. So actually, technically, if I do these in the right order, um, this b would be times zero. So that actually that's why that's would it, it looks kind of silly. So it would be like b times zero. So let's see. 
Yeah, so the, that point is a bad point to use. I should use a second key point here. So I can, let me go back to. So when I put, when I were to see an equation like this, I would pretty much know that A would be or would um, alter X on the axis or on the graph, and B is going to pretty much alter or change what the Y would be or a stretch. They're, or, they're actually both altering Y. It's when it's in parentheses that it happens to X. When it, okay, let me write when it's in parentheses. Yeah, let me put a second point here. Um, we go, we have 10, comma, 1. Um, oh, but that's natural log. I'll make this log again just so. Okay, so this is point number 2. And then let's see. So that's going to be P. I can make sure my stretches here and then I'm actually I'm going to make another slider for our shifts left and right so you can see how that happens just so you can demonstrate okay so now we've got two points here so you can see so if I move it left or right you can see how those points are moving left or right If I have this plus A, you can see how the key points move up and down, and that's outside of the parentheses. So A is moving the Y value, but not the X value. And then, now that I put in a second point, you can see how this really stretches, because the B, the number in front of the log and the natural log, multiplies your Y value. So if it's like three, it's going to stretch it up. So you can see, oops, now you can see how it's pulling it up, but it's yeah. not moving the X. So I think having that second point helps you see that a little better. Yeah, and actually having the E up there as well helped me see, because was, that was going to be my next question, like could it move back and forth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if we make it negative, you can see that it, it's a, then it reflects it and makes it upside down. Okay. So, yeah, that's how those move. It helps when you know what points to look at. <laughs> right, definitely. And Desmos, um, this actually is going to help me a lot get caught up. So thank you very much for this as well. You're welcome. I love Desmos. And it's it's got a lot of cool things that are even just like, oh, those are all graphs I made. <laughs> it has tons of examples of things if you want to mess around. Like it has parabolas. Um, most of these things are pre-calc things and calculus stuff. So... Most of this will not be helpful unless you have to move on, but it does have lines and parabolas as examples. So, yeah, so that is 5.2. Um, so I already have a video in the classroom of 5.1. So now this will be 5.2, so you guys can watch those. And I definitely recommend watching the 5.1 before you go any further. Um, and I definitely wa recommend watching the videos before you even do the homework or you at least have the homework with you so you can kind of do it while you're watching the videos. 5.3 might be where you guys start seeing getting a little confused or might having some struggles. So when you look at the 5.3, you're going to maybe take some extra time with that. Make sure you're taking notes, um, writing down the directions when you're taking notes, like what I'm saying out loud, write it down as well in addition to just what I'm putting down. So that way you have the directions with you. Um, because that's where we're going to have properties of logs and you're going to be manipulating logarithms and people usually get a little confused there. So just a heads up that, that that will get a little more complicated. But once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad at all. And then from there, the solving, once you understand that, the solving is pretty easy. So, yeah, that's all, that's all I've got for you guys. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you guys, both of you, for showing up, asking questions. I really appreciate it. It makes these more fun for me when there's actually people attending. So um, I always enjoy that. <laughs> Thank you for having us and taking the time. Yeah, not a problem. So you, you guys have a great night, okay? Thank you. You too. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.